This video presents the derivations of the single design formula based on the first principle. This represents the cross sections of a column. The dimensions of the columns are given here. There are steel bars in the columns. Assuming the area of steel bar here is AS prime and the area of steel bar here is AS. Under the axial force, there are two possibilities. The column can be in fully compressions or there could be combinations of compression and tension stresses in the cross sections. When the neutral axis is within the cross sections of the column, we are expecting a compressive and tensile stresses in the column. However, when the neutral axis falls beyond the cross sectional area, that means the entire section of columns is subjected to compressive force. As we are normally using the simplified stress plot for us to quantify the forces and moment acting in the column, it is more precisely say that the stress plot, if it ends within the cross-sectional area of the beam as expressed in this term, that means these conditions apply. When the stress plots actually fall beyond the cross sections of the member, that means the column is entirely in compressions. These expressions give explicit differences between the two scenarios. When there are existence of the tensile strength in the column, the strength limit for the compressions is 0 0.0035. It normally occurs at the top of the column with the maximum strength. Assuming the strength is linearly across the cross sections of the column, the strength of the steel bar here can be obtained through interpolations. The X here refers to the positions of the neutral axis. The size of the stress block here is considered as 0 0.8 times the x here. This represents the maximum compressive stress of a concrete by considering the factors of safety of the material. The compressive force in the steel bar here is calculated based on the stress-stress relationships. As for the FCC here, it is referring to the area of the stress block here. The positions of SCC would be the centroid of the stress block, which is S divided by 2 from the top of the column. For the column which is subjected to purely compressions, the strength limit it will be determined here, which is 3 per 7 H from the top of the column. The strength relationship again is linear. Based on the linear relationships, you are able to obtain the compressive strength and also the strength of the steel here and the steel here. The compressive strength limit is determined as 0 0.002. The compressive force of the column is determined by the area of this stress block. As the neutral axis fall beyond the cross sections and the stress block go beyond the section as well, the S here it will be equal to the H. This is the maximum compressive stress of the concrete. 
the forces in the steel here and the forces in the steel here are determined based on the stress-stress relationship then based on the stress plot diagram we are able to obtain the asia force acting on the column which is equals to the summations of all the forces forces of concrete forces of steel and forces of steel the forces equations are given here the forces generated in the steel can be calculated by its specified U strength multiply the area of the steel bar. As for the moment, we are referring to the mid height of the column. It is determined by multiplying the forces with the lever arm in reference to the mid height of the column. For a column which is subjected to an uniform compressive force, the center of the forces for the concrete under compression will be along the neutral axis of the sections. With that, this will lead to zero moment. These two equations give the basic equations for the design chart this is a typical design chart the y-axis is n divided by bhfck while the x-axis is m divided by bh squares fck however the two basic equations are in the functions of n and n with that the N is to be divided by BH FCK while the M is to be divided by BH square FCK. On top of that, a column typically have a symmetrical arrangement of reinforcement bar, left and right and top and bottom. In this case, the reinforcement area here and here will be similar. And from the diagram here, the D prime is equals to H minus D when the section is symmetrical. Substitute the relevant value into the divisions of this. These two equations are obtained. The two equations is very complex and not suitable to be solved directly. Therefore, a design chart may be used. This design chart is designed based on these two equations. They are a series of design charts with different ratio of d prime per h. From 0 0.05 to 0 0.25. The chart here will differ slightly due to different ratio of d prime per h. This line represents the ASFYBHFCK. To use this chart, you need to obtain the n per bhfck and m per bhfck then you find the intersections between the two values that you obtain then you obtain the value based in the functions of as fyk per bhfck from there, you can calculate backward to substitute back these symbols for you to obtain the amount of reinforcement bar required for the column section. When the intersection points fall in between these regions, no reinforcement bar is required for the sections. 
Under these circumstances, AS mean is to be provided to the column section. When the intersections fall beyond the region, for example here, the column is considered failed. You will need to revise the sections of the column.